Hey y'all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I just kind of wanted to talk to you guys about products that have worked personally for my dry skin. So if you're someone who has dry skin in general and you've been looking for good products for foundation, for concealer, for primers, things that you're going to put on your face before you put on your eyeshadow or whatever it is, then just hang tight. I do want to let you all know that I put out a bonus video this past Friday, so if you didn't see it yet, go check it out. I did vlog throughout the month of September, and I just wanted to show you all behind the scenes life of Linda, if you will. So you're going to see things like what I eat in a day, you're going to see my cat, because when I asked you all on Instagram what you wanted to see in a vlog, you pretty much... You all just said my cat, so I mean, I'm not offended at all because I'm just going to show her off at every single chance I get. But the best way to find out about those bonus videos is to subscribe. So if you haven't subscribed already, I would love if you hit that button and become a part of the Rockstar fam. I do put out new videos here on YouTube every Monday. Before we get into the products though, it is time to light the cat candle. This cat candle has a metal cat skeleton inside and I only light it when I am filming. We did pick a new name last week for this cat candle and um, his name is Rooster. We can't see any of the skeleton inside just yet, but the cat is on fire, we can officially start. Okay, so, so one more thing, there's just one more thing. My video that I posted last Monday was all about my Ulta fantasy cart, where if I could have carte blanche and just go shopping for whatever I wanted in the store, what I would buy. The number one thing I said I would buy would be the Dyson Airwrap Styler. So this is a hair tool that costs $550. Well, wouldn't you know it, the day I posted that video, the day I posted that video, I get an email in my inbox that that specific hair tool is 20% off. That brought the price down to $440, which is still extreme, but then I got to thinking, I've been saving my Ulta points for years. I have these Visa gift cards that I literally got three, four years ago that I've never spent. I have two Ulta gift cards just sitting in my wallet, just staring at me and begging me to buy something. So, I got the Dyson Airwrap. <laughs> this normally costs $550, but after all was said and done, all my gift certificates were in there and the 20% off coupon, I got this for $60.99. Oh my God, yes! Give this video a thumbs up if you're impressed with my couponing and saving skills because I'm patting myself on the back for that one. I did put out a video several months ago because I got to test my bosses for a day. She lent it to me. But now that I have my own, let me know if you all would like to see a tutorial using this because I do feel like it is an investment piece. And if you're gonna invest in it, you should know all the details. So let me know down below if that's something you would like to see. But let's get right into my suggestions for the best products for dry skin. First, let's start with primers. I do have to admit there's one that I ran out of, so I don't have it. I'm just gonna put a picture of it right here. But this is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. It is so moisturizing. I have bought countless bottles of this, and it gives your skin this beautiful luminosity. But the way that it helps your dry skin is it just sinks in nicely. It doesn't sit on top. It actually helps to moisturize your skin while creating a perfect base for your makeup to go on top of it. Again, I've used this product so many times throughout the years, and it's one that I always recommend whenever anyone is looking for a great primer, especially if you have dry skin. It just, I, I don't know, it really does create that glow from within, and when you put foundation on top of it, you look like an angel. But the second primer is very similar to it, but at a drugstore price. So this is the NYX High Glass Primer. Again, this is very similar in that it creates a very glowy, luminescent base, but it doesn't stay sticky on your skin. It really sinks in a bit, but it does smooth out your face and foundation goes on beautifully over it. I do prefer the Becca Backlight Priming Filter over this. I think the ingredients are a little bit higher quality, but I still really love this. I'm actually almost, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I had that little left. Ooh. Oh crap, I'm almost done this tube. I absolutely love this as well. So if you're looking for a more affordable option, I really feel like this is a great, great quality item. The third recommendation for a primer is probably gonna be, I don't know if I wanna say controversial, but people either love this product or they hate this product. The high glass primer and the backlight priming filter are what I use for my everyday makeup or you know, just when I'm going out, things like that. But if I need my makeup to really stick all day, or it's like I'm going out for a night and I want my makeup to really, really stay put, I use the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. So this primer is really interesting because your makeup will 
grip the hell out of this. It is really fantastic at putting your makeup there and holding it, but the hydro part of the hydro grip means that it does add a bit of moisture to your skin as well. So if your skin is starved for moisture, if you have fine lines, this is really good for it because it does smooth that out a bit, but it's gonna hold your foundation on really well so that it's not going to settle into any of those fine lines and wrinkles. Now, again, a lot of people don't love this product because it does have kind of a tackier texture to it as opposed to the other ones which are very emollient and really sink in. This one has a bit of a tackier texture to really hold your makeup on all day. So I would suggest that if you can get a sample of this or get a smaller container of it, see if you like it. But I really like it for those days I need my makeup to stay there and not freaking go anywhere. All right, let's move on to tinted moisturizers. I am a huge, huge fan of tinted moisturizers because even though before I put on any makeup, I do my full skincare routine, which includes hydrating serums, hydrating eye cream, hydrating moisturizers, I still will never turn down a little bit of extra moisture so that my dry skin stays nice and hydrated. The first one isn't even really known as a tinted moisturizer, but I consider it to be one. So the writing has all rubbed off, but this is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This has a tint to it, so that's why I wouldn't call it any kind of a primer or a base of any kind, but it has such a beautiful luminosity to it as well that you can wear this under foundation and have that shine through, or on days where I really don't feel like doing much, I will just wear this instead. It's a step between a primer and a tinted moisturizer, so it does give your skin a tint. It comes in several different colors, but it's not gonna cover every imperfection. It's still gonna let your freckle shine through or you know if there are scars things like that this will not cover it but it hydrates your skin so beautifully while giving that luminosity. How many times in one video can I say the word luminosity? I've never said that word so much in my damn life but this is a cult favorite for a reason. Now the price point is a little bit higher, but I have had this one bottle for way longer than you're probably supposed to keep one bottle. These probably have a lifetime on it of like six months. Nay, I've had this for like two years. So yes, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, I would highly, highly, highly recommend this. Going to a more affordable price point, this one is a true tinted moisturizer and it is my current absolute favorite tinted moisturizer, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. I can't say enough good things about this. So hyaluronic acid is one ingredient that's always good to look for if you have dry skin, and even if you don't have dry skin. It is a humectant, which means it pulls moisture into the skin and holds it there. So hyaluronic acid, if you're using it as a serum, is best applied to kind of a damp face to really pull that moisture in. But what this is gonna do is it's just going to pull the moisture in from the outside air and everything like that. You don't have to necessarily wet your face before you put this on. That might make it streaky, but it does pull moisture from out of the air into your skin. At the same time, the coverage is just so beautiful. It is still a very light coverage, as all tinted moisturizers are going to be. Your freckles are still going to show through. Your luminosity, yes, luminosity is going to show through, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful tinted moisturizer, and it is such a great price point because it's ColourPop. It's cruelty-free. It's just I am so obsessed with this. It's to the point where I really want to buy like 10 backups in case they ever discontinue it. I love this so much that I just, I need it forever. All right, moving on to foundations, proper foundations. I have two that I'm gonna recommend. One is a drugstore price brand and the other one is definitely not. Let's start with drugstore pricing. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation. And I feel like everyone raved about this for a while and then it just kind of got quiet and no one's talking about it anymore. I still love and am fully obsessed with this. So this is a light to medium coverage foundation. You can build it up. It does build up very nicely. It makes your face glow, but it's not so wet and emollient that it moves around, which is nice because sometimes dewy foundations can slip all around your face and if you try to put any kind of product on top, whether it's cream or liquid, it just moves around. This one does not. It stays put and it gives a beautiful, even coverage that I just, I'm obsessed with. 
The pricing is always right. It's around $15 a bottle, but it's almost always on sale at Ulta. And because it's in the drugstore side, you can use those coupons for this. So if you haven't yet tried the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation and you're into that kind of dewy, light to medium coverage, I highly recommend this. And the last foundation I wanna talk about, this one, ugh, this one's a budget killer, I'm not gonna lie. So this is the Natasha Denona Face Glow Foundation. They used to sell this at Sephora, but they stopped and now they only sell it on Natasha Denona's website. This is my favorite foundation of all time. Now, if you do not like a dewy finish, if you do not like a luminous finish, you will hate this with the passion of a thousand suns. When they say face glow, they mean face glow, like you are going to blind astronauts in outer space. This shit is gonna make you like a glowing comet. Now this one, you can build up to an even higher coverage. I'd say like a medium full coverage if you want it to be so. It builds up very nicely, but you can also just do a pump and treat this almost like a tinted moisturizer and it evens out the skin beautifully. But again, there is definitely that glow. So with a lot of these other foundations, I don't have to put down any kind of powder on top of them. This is one where I do have to powder some areas. So I do have to powder under my eyes and in like the crook of my nose and my nostrils on the side because that's where my foundation personally tends to slip a little bit. But the coverage on this is so beautiful and the glow, oh my gosh, I keep talking about it, but the glow is so completely stunning that it's worth it to me. It's just so, so beautiful. And I really do feel like it hydrates my dry skin as well. It doesn't settle into any lines at all. It just covers what it needs to cover and doesn't cover everything. Does that make sense? I feel like this is a foundation that actually looks at your face and is like, oh, freckles? Yeah, we cool, we cool. So you can you can come out wrinkles, back the fuck up. So yeah, I'm not even gonna lie, this retails for $42 a tube, but it lasts me forever. I have had this one tube for a long time and it is definitely nowhere near gone. So they do last a long time, a little bit goes a very long way. I just, oh, I'm so madly in love with this one, I can't even tell you. Moving on to powders, I have two I wanna tell you about. One is a loose powder, one is a pressed powder. To start with, the loose powder is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. This one is so interesting and I genuinely haven't felt anything like this before. So underneath you have this lid that you need to keep sealed tightly and then you have a sort of a mesh fabric here and the powder is underneath. What's so interesting about this is that the powder genuinely feels wet. It feels like it's adding moisture back into your skin. And this is my favorite powder to use if I feel like my foundation is starting to look a little too matte or maybe it is settling in certain areas. This helps not only to set it, but refresh it like it says, and it brings moisture back into your skin. So it refreshes everything. It just looks fantastic. And I do feel that it still holds my makeup in place all day. So I only use powder again, like I said, in very specific areas under my eyes and around my nose. And this makes it so that things don't just settle into the lines around my eyes, or it helps to at least alleviate some of it settling into the crook of my nose. Let's be honest here, so far nothing has completely fixed that region right there. I'm offended at it. But I do feel like this does a great job, again, of putting that moisture back into the skin if you've lost it, if you've gone a little too ham with the powder products, the blushes, the bronzers, things like that. So. I really recommend this and I personally love to use this with like a wet beauty blender, you know, a damp beauty blender, excuse me. And it's good for, you know, just keeping that moisture from the product, but also from the little bit of wetness here and puts it back in your skin. I also mentioned that I wanna to talk to you about a pressed powder. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. So this just looks like your average pressed powder. They do come in several shades, so these do have a very slight tint to them. They are not translucent like the Hydra Mist is, but I really feel like this does a good job of keeping any glow to your skin. So many times a powder just dulls that down and makes you look cakey. So especially if you are somebody with dry skin, 
The last thing you want is to look cakey and dehydrated on your face. So this does, again, a great job of setting your makeup and keeping it where it's supposed to be, but still letting that glow shine through and really making you look healthy and awake. And I just, I really love it. This is, again, priced on the higher end side of things, but I'm not sure how much you can see. I barely have a dent in this, barely have a dent, and I use this one many times a week. I would say every day, but I go back and forth a little bit. Anyway, it's just, it goes such a long way and it gives you such a nice finish. So this is good for anybody, but especially if you have dry skin. Finally, I want to talk to you about concealer. So under your eyes, especially once you get to be a certain age, like this gal right here. Finally, I want to talk to you about concealer. So under your eyes, especially once you get to be a certain age, like this gal right here, is very is a very sensitive spot, but it can also be very, very dry. And if you have dry skin in general, this is where you're gonna see it the most. So you want a concealer that is not too thick, something that's maybe a little more emollient that really will help to hydrate those under eyes while it is covering up any dark circles or imperfections. So my all-time favorite concealer right now, okay, wait, it was the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer, and they discontinued it, okay? So this Urban Decay Stay Naked Concealer, completely different. Don't let them talk you into it, it's, it's garbage. I love the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. This one is just, ugh, it warms my heart so much because it is so creamy and so emollient. It glides on, it pats out so nicely. I love to dot this on and then again, use a damp beauty blender to gently press it into the skin and blend it out. It covers up imperfections so well. Like, I feel like you can't even tell that I have gotten not much sleep lately and that I have not had nearly enough water. I just really, really, really like it. And of course the price point is right because it's ColourPop, but I feel like even if this was a $30 concealer, I would be buying this over and over again because of the quality. It is so, so good. So if you're somebody who has dry under eyes, or if you have, I'm sorry, let's be honest, I got wrinkles, lots of them under my eyes. If you have that like me, I implore you to give this a shot. So that's it, those are my recommendations for the best face products for dry skin. I would love to hear your opinions down below if you've used any of these products, if you like them. Also, everything is gonna be linked in the description box down below. Those are gonna be affiliate links, which means if you click on them, it's no more money to you, but I get a little bit of a kickback if you use my link, so I really, really appreciate it. Anytime you guys do that, it really does help out my channel, and I'm just so, so appreciative. I hope you all are having a wonderful start to your spooky season. You all can follow me on Facebook Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Those are all glitter follow. As always and forever, you are super freaking rock stars. I love you with my whole heart, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I didn't even blow you a kiss. Who even am I?